Welcome, Mel. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks so much, Karen. So Equals International were a very early implementer of the EN Toolkit. Um, personally, thank you for um, your support of this work. Can you tell me why you jumped on board so early, right from the start with the EN Toolkit? I think a lot of it was about timing. In 2018, Equals was undertaking a lot of industry consultation with our industry partners about what they were seeing in the new workforce of graduates, both Certificate 3 in individual support and also nursing graduates, and what they were experiencing in the workplace. And one of the things that came up, particularly in the context of aged care, was confidence around palliative care and um, providing palliative care in a way that was meaningful to the individual patient, but also caring for families and um, dealing with complex situations. And so, when the EN toolkit became available and we looked at the resource and shared that within our team, it seemed like a really practical way that we could improve palliative care education at Equals. Excellent. Because at the time it was an elective, wasn't it? Yeah, that's so, right. So that was actually quite a, I guess, a big decision. I mean, when we first started, there was really only probably about 15, 20% of programs that were engaged and implementing that training package or the unit of competency. And I think that's where that industry consultation remains so important when we're looking at new courses or redeveloping courses, making sure that we're consulting industry because ultimately we want to ensure that our students are highly employable and palliative care is recognised to be a task um, or a competency that's associated with those roles. And it's such an important part of those roles. And I think that's what industry recognises. So as an education provider, we have to recognise that and implement that too. It's really important. Excellent. So then once you've picked up the EN toolkit, how did you find the educators actually responded to the resource? So I think the wonderful thing about the implementation of the toolkit was the support that we received from yourself and the palliative care curriculum for undergraduates in its actual implementation. Because I think when we first looked at the toolkit, there were lots of questions about, am I capable of actually delivering this standard of content? Um, being such a specialised area of nursing and care work, um, certainly people want to have that opportunity and that platform to be able to ask questions and have them answered by people who are expert in the field. Mm -hmm. So I think the support from PCC for you was one of the main components to it actually being implemented successfully. But I think the other thing that um, led to our educators being so comfortable with the resources was the variety in the toolkit. So having the access to the videos and then the supportive content, that's what made the difference in actually using it in the classroom okay. setting. So that leads me to my next question, actually. What, was some of the, what are some of the teaching strategies that they've actually found have been quite effective? So I think it's been really important to scaffold that education and ensure that um, we're breaking it up into small areas of theory and then supporting it with video content. Um, something that we have found particularly important with the delivery of the palliative care curriculum in both our Diploma of Nursing and Certificate 3 individual support is ensuring that we've got counselling support available because we know that those units of competency can be quite triggering for students and can be quite unexpectedly triggering, but they can also be triggering for educators. Um, we know particularly in the last couple of years with coronavirus, there's been more incidences of students who have experienced a family member's passing whilst they've been actively studying and border closures have impacted the ability for people to travel. So having our counsellors involved, having our mental health first aiders involved has been really important to ensure that when we're teaching those units, we're able to do it effectively using the toolkit, but also in a manner that's really supporting our students through content, which can be um, quite confronting. Mm, definitely. So in terms of the, the, that confrontation that the students may feel and experience, was there anything else? I mean, how else have they responded to, once you get past some of those barriers, I guess, or concerns, have they enjoyed the content or have they responded otherwise? I think in terms of the content itself, I think the wonderful thing about it is it, is it debunked a lot of um, myths yes. or um, preconceived ideas that students might have had about what mm. palliative care is and how um, it will impact their work role and um, what their responsibilities are. So in terms of the actual toolkit itself, I think um, being able to view the videos and um, hear some experiences that are very realistic um, has 
sort of prepared them better for when they're going out onto work integrated learning experiences um, and triggering some of those questions early on. So what we actually saw when we surveyed our students after the implementation of the toolkit was a significant increase in confidence overall when it comes to actually what does this mean for me as a future enrolled nurse or a future care worker. Thanks, Mel. That is fantastic um, feedback around the student experience. Could you tell me, have you had any feedback from industry? Have employers noticed a difference in um, graduating enrolled nurses? That's really quite an interesting question because this started with industry consultation for us and certainly industry consultation since its implementation that last year they have graduated have been more work ready um, to actually care for people who are experiencing palliative care regardless of what phase of palliative care that is. So we've seen increased confidence with terminal care um, which to us um, was one of the things that we wanted to achieve. I think one of the um, sort of light bulb moments that we had was when industry started asking, how, how are you delivering your palliative care training? Oh, wow. What's different? Because um, they noticed and wow. they were trying to figure out what we were doing differently um, and their own interest in actually picking up the palliative care curriculum to use in the workplace at, at a different angle. So that's been really, you know, that's a wonderful thing as well to use on the postgrad. So, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks so much, Kylie.